Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled To Make Do With Now, New Directions in Japanese Architecture, edited by Yuma Shinohara and Andrea Surubi, and published by the Swiss Architecture Museum in collaboration with Miriam Ferlag. Make Do With Now introduces the thinking and projects of a new generation of architects working in Japan today. This generation must grapple with a plethora of urgent problems currently plaguing the country, including rapid population decline and emptying provinces, the proliferation of vacant houses all across the nation, neoliberal urban development, a largely stagnant economy whose burden falls disproportionately on the shoulders of the younger generations, and, of course, the global climate crisis. Instead of being humbled into resignation or seeking refuge in a depoliticized pursuit of architecture for architecture's sake, however, many architects of this generation are choosing to confront these issues head-on. Almost two decades after Architecture from Japan was celebrated throughout the world for its ephemeral, light-filled spaces under the banner of New Innocence, the current wave of Japanese practices features a decisively new aesthetic politics that isn't afraid to leave things rough around the edges. Turning their marginalized position into a strength, these practices are developing a range of critical, ecological and social practices that creatively make do with limited resources, with found materials, with existing spaces. Whether working from the periphery, exploiting gaps in the system or occupying new roles in the process that have previously been overlooked, these practitioners are articulating a new architectural agency that radically departs from the traditional image of the architect author. This also means rethinking what architecture actually entails. Having come into professional practice following the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and Fukushima nuclear disaster, this generation is fundamentally aware of the fragility and contradictions of prevailing systems. Perhaps this explains their interest in networked flows. Buildings are no longer seen as standalone objects, but rather as inextricably linked to the larger social, material, capital and information cycles that exist both inside and outside of them. Architecture, then, becomes a matter of engaging with these flows to achieve the desired outcomes, directing them, blocking them or even subverting them. While these architects are surely developing these positions in relation to international perspectives, they are just as much turning to practices and structures traditionally cultivated in Japan for inspiration. In a moment where the post-war rationalist order of growth and development has reached an impasse, older phenomena such as collective house building, traditional artisanship, self-sufficient material economies as found in rural villages or informal social structures at the neighborhood scale, all things that have been marginalized in the name of development, are being re-evaluated and reclaimed. The reuse of materials is just as likely to be coached in a modern language of sustainability as the traditional Japanese attitude of motainai, what a waste, hearkening back to a paradigm of scarcity where frugality was not a moral choice but simply common sense. How does one define a generation? Is it an age range, a common social milieu, a set of shared values? Is it an identity internally defined, or does its contours only come into view in retrospect or when seen from an external lens? This question is particularly pertinent in the context of Japanese architecture, where, perhaps more so than in any European or North American traditions, the historiography tends to describe a linear sequence of generations emerging at intervals of approximately 10 years. This project approaches generation in a looser sense. 
While a majority of the mentioned architects were born after 1980, thus representing the youngest cohort currently practicing in Japan, selection was not based on an arbitrary age cutoff, but rather on an affinity to certain common interests and approaches that signal a new way of approaching and doing architecture. The following are attempts to sketch out these trends and commonalities among the practices of these architects, a venture at forming a makeshift vocabulary for describing a generation that is very much in the process of articulating itself. Increasingly, architecture in Japan is one of transformation and reprogramming, rather than of new construction. If previous generations of young architects had made their name through adventurous single-family homes commissioned by young families to mark new phases of their lives, one could speak now of a renovation generation whose first projects consist of small-scale refurbishments of existing buildings and interiors, an observation borne out by taking a look at any recent architecture magazine in Japan. On the one hand, this trend is a function of scarcity. Commissions for new constructions are few or far between, often because young people simply do not have the resources to buy property and finance new houses from the ground up. But this is also reflective of a general shift in cultural values. Since the period of rapid economic growth following the Second World War, Japan and its construction industry have been traditionally marked by a scrap-and-build model, tearing down old buildings and erecting new ones in cycles of approximately 30 years to accommodate new needs. However, declining demand for housing due to a shrinking population, in addition to an increased awareness of the environmental burden of the scrap-and-build model, have forced a shift from a consumption-centered flow paradigm to a stock paradigm, whose emphasis lies on reusing existing building stock and on building for the longer term. On top of that, in 2018, an outstanding 13.6% of all houses in Japan stood vacant, the highest rate it has ever been. With further demographic change on the horizon, certain metrics predict that the housing vacancy rate will rise to as much as 30% by the year 2038. As the ecological costs of new construction become ever more apparent, engaging with this existing building stock seems to be not only the pragmatic choice, but also a moral imperative. The frontier for architects in Japan today is thus less the mythical tabula rasa of the Sarachi empty lot than the swath of un- or under-reutilized building stock inherited from previous generations. All too often, renovations are seen as less prestigious than new construction, as marked by compromise and limitations. Yet, what if we were to understand these projects not as mere survival tactics or preludes to more desirable commissions for new buildings, but rather as aesthetic and constructive statements in their own right? Lacking opportunities for experimentation through traditional commissions, many architects are turning to the one sphere where they have absolute control of a space for testing out their ideas, the places where they live and work. While architects' private residences have long been a fruitful field of experimentation in Japanese architecture, the trend seems to be undergoing a particular flourishing in recent years. A further trend is the extension of this experimental spirit to the workplace. In contrast to the withdrawn architectural offices of yore, often found on the higher floors of anonymous multi-tenant buildings, many young architectural practices are opting for workspaces that are open to the city around them. Hosting events or functioning as co-working spaces open to members of other professions, these spaces reflect a new openness among architects toward their local communities. In these projects, architects are stepping out of their shadows and putting their own lives on display. No longer content to merely envision new ways of living and working at the drafting board, they are themselves modeling new lifestyles and thereby imbuing the role of the architect with a new agency. Uh, 
ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.